Pablo Delano on his exhibition. My name is Marcos Dimas. I'm the executive director of Taller Boricua Puerto Rican Workshop Incorporated, 1970. It's going on 47 years now. Yeah, but uh, this exhibition, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi. Exhibition was curated by Nita Tufino, and I'm gonna pass the mic over to her so she could introduce the talk and we'll get on with it. Okay, thank you. Next year we will be 50 years. That's 47, but uh, in 2019 we will be 50. So still struggling, but and maintaining it Boricua, inclusive of all the cultures in New York City, but we're a uh, Boricua institution. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming today to this wonderful panel talk. Welcome to Taller Boricua and Pablo Delano's photographic exhibit, Arte Urbano, Puerto Rico, Urban Art. Most of these pictures were taken before Maria and after. It seems that our Puerto Rican diaspora experience is now classified as before Maria and after Maria. <laughs> but our fellow Boricuas in the island feel this even uh, more because they live through Maria. These murals depict the visual arts of Puerto Rico that have a rich history of social engagement as well as, well as a connection to graphic art movement throughout Latin America and the globe. The island's current dynamic urban art scene has garnered attention from art critic magazines and newspapers because of its quality and scope from complex graffiti to sophisticated murals on a range of themes. Painted walls produced by local as well as international artists can be found throughout the cities and towns of the island. With our distinguished scholars and artists, we welcome Professor Guillermo Irizarri from the University of Connecticut, but lovingly known as UCAM. Joy Diaz, artist from the artist collective Moribivi, along with our featured artist photographer Pablo Delano from Trinity College, who needs no further introduction. Pablo is a national and a Puerto Rican treasure. Thank you. Well, well if I am, so are you. <laughs> Uh, thank everybody for coming. Thank you for to Marcos and Nitsa and Taller for hosting the exhibit, obviously, and to the talk. Thank you all for coming out this beautiful day when I'm sure many of you would rather be outside enjoying the sunlight and the beautiful weather. Um, I thought I would start and, and we could all contribute a little bit our thoughts, ideas about this work. Um, uh, to, for me, it's an honor to be here uh, with these particularly with these panelists, Nietzsche obviously has been involved in this struggle for a very, very long time, what it means to, 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 to create art and to be uh, Boricua, not just in the island, but here as well. But um, uh, uh, the other two panelists, I think, will hopefully will add really unique perspective that, that I can, in part because, because of who they are and what they do. Um, Joy is, a, is an artist who actually painted with her, her um, with her colectivo, her group of, to which she belongs, one of the murals that's in photograph in the other room. So she's actively involved in this right now. Um, and Guillermo is someone with whom I've traveled around the island with to photograph in it because he's thought a lot about the meaning of this. And I hope that he'll share some of his ideas and his thoughts upon reflecting on the pictures and the process and what it means. As for me, I thought what I could do is start a little bit and talk to you a little bit about um, where the project came from, you know, you, you're seeing all these frame photographs, but um, it came out of uh, out of where, you know, and uh, and some of my thoughts I thought might be interesting in terms of what drove me to do this and why I kept going back and how the project became a project as opposed to just some activity that I did randomly. So initially, the project was that it was an activity that I did randomly, and it came from 
just visiting the island and, and noticing these amazing, um, these amazing paintings. And by that I mean everything from just very simple graffiti uh, to very complex murals uh, that were sometimes enormous, three, four stories to, to other just tags. And honestly, I don't really differentiate in terms of uh, the value of the, say, different genres or different types of work. To me, it's all really fascinating. And uh, so I just started taking pictures of this stuff because it's what I do. I come from, a, you know, most of my life um, as a photographer, what's motivated me, what's made me take pictures is, is fascinating with a fascination with just what's in front of me, something I see that I find really, really interesting. So for me, the camera just becomes a tool for learning more about it, discovering more. And so, so trying to photograph it, having the challenge of photographing it and photographing in certain ways teaches me about what I'm, what I'm looking at and makes me think more and more about what I'm doing, about the actual subject matter in front of me. So it's not so much that it's a form of self-expression, it's more it's a form of discovering something that I find enthusiastic and being able to share it with others. Uh, especially if I feel like it's something important and something that people should know about, the people that should, uh, the, that, uh, the, you know, that's, that, that there's something in the content or in whatever it is I'm looking at that's, that's, that's worth sharing, that's worth putting out there for the world to see. Um, so so uh, it, became, it began randomly with just, um, oh, look at that, stop the car, I'm getting out. And people were frustrating because they were sitting there in their cars when, while I was carefully photographing and uh, this has been your experience, I'm sure. <laughs> they, they, they always, always said, they never, they always say, oh, no, no, no. But in fact, I look at them and people reading the newspaper while I'm out there photographing. Um, I've also been on my own with rental car looking for a place to park because I see something. Um, <coughs> this began in about 2012 or 2013. And with every visit, uh, back home, I would always make a point of going and looking for new stuff, new murals to photograph, and uh, anything that I noticed, I would want to stop and photograph. And, and subsequent visits, more and more, every time I visited the island, it became more and more important to me until I started going specifically to photograph. And Guillermo and I made a trip together where we basically spent every day for about, about a week, seven days, including going out to Arecibo and other places, Ponce, uh, and, um, and uh, uh, so it, it sort of, it's a project that became itself. I mean, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a deliberate thing, it just sort of grew and grew, and then I realized, oh, I have a project. So um, the exhibit that you see here is a, is a kind of a expanded version of, of an exhibit that was done at the Manitouk Museum in, uh, in Willamette, and, Waterbury, Connecticut, a couple of years ago, Nietzsche saw it and thought, wow, we should do this here in Atalia, and I'm very happy that it, that it is here and that it's, that it's uh, in New York and, and uh, for the community to, to share and, and, and see it. So what are some of the things that, that, you know, that made me really stop and get out of the car and say, all right, this is something I have to photograph, this is, this is worth stopping for. I think there are many factors. First of all, being trained as a visual artist, I, I would, it's just stuff that I notice. I notice visual things. Um, secondly, I think it's the quality of the work was really extraordinary. Um, and thirdly, it's the context. Because this was before Maria um, and Irma, but things weren't exactly going great. Right? This was at the time when the so-called debt crisis um, was really hitting very, very hard, and areas of the city of San Juan, for example, and Santosha were devastated, and yet these things were coming up out of nowhere, right? And um, I understand that, that, the comp that the situation is complex, right? And, and that, that um, uh, having a neighborhood like Santosha being taken over by artists or muralists can be a blessing, it can also be a mixed blessing, and it can also create problems, like we've all heard the word gentrification. We know. Nevertheless, the whole process of watching this happen and watching just paint go on the walls, everywhere, 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 the, the, the quantity, if you've seen, if you've been to the island, you know, everywhere, the quantity of visual expression that's come out uh, is asombroso, you know, it's really just very uh, striking. Um, 
Uh, and then you start thinking, at least I start thinking as someone who's you know, been a visual artist for a long time, what, where does this come from? And I can think of many, many, sort, you know, many reasons why this might have happened, like how this, what made this sort of phenomenon sprout. And um, you know, I can't, um, I don't, I'm not the kind of person that would analyze really carefully and methodically from an intellectual standpoint how all these elements play in together. But I do think that there's, uh, the, 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 those elements are worth throwing out there and maybe some of the other panelists can pick up on it a little bit. Um, uh, for one thing, I think that um, somehow the Mexican muralist tradition has something to do with this. I don't know what, because I know that some people are aware of it, some people may not be aware of it. Another thing that, that is, um, that I think is very important in the formation of the, or the creation of this whole phenomenon is um, is uh, is uh, you know the birth of graffiti and the Bronx and and uh, and the the Guagua area people going back and forth and graffiti artists and taggers from the U.S. going to the island and coming back and that that kind of flow of influences um, among other things right um, so um, <clears throat> another thing is a very very strong thread of social justice and social consciousness that runs throughout our visual arts. Um, and so all of that, I think, plays into this um, as to why, who knows why, but you know, here it is, it's this extraordinary phenomenon, and, um, and you see uh, a lot of faces of people uh, from, you know, Mohammed Ali, Tamir Da Silva, to I don't know who this is, you know, but uh, you have, this is uh, one in the middle of, over there is in Trastalleras, which is where the, the, the trains were worked on, the, 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 uh, the uh, machine shops for the old railroad. And so you see a train car in the back, and um, uh, a lot of the uh, murals and the content address the issues that, that um, are most pressing on the island right now. Um, and so basically, it was my instinct to, um, to photograph them and document them, and I ended up you know, with an exhibition. So who wants to pick up? Okay. I think there's, a, there's a microphone here. Okay. Well, I prepared some remarks. It's uh, only 20 pages. <laughs> In three point type. A little bit less, a little bit less. <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm in, I, I am uh, tremendously inspired by this work. I have to say that. Uh, what drew me to this was initially my my desire to work with uh, uh, with precarity, with extreme precariousness in Puerto Rico, uh, related to uh, the debt crisis, a, a catastrophe that happened before uh, the hurricanes, and also. Uh, the abandonment of certain areas of Puerto Rico. So for several years now, I have been studying Pablo Delano's work and his trajectory as a visual artist, as a documentary and journalistic photographer. Uh, I have written a couple of articles on his work and have included his photographs in several courses related to Latinx, Caribbean, and Puerto Rican culture at the University of Connecticut. Uh, and I'm uh, very honored to be here. I thank you, Itza and Pablo for thinking of me, and uh, it's an honor to be next to you, Joy, and to have met you before uh, this week. And as we know, Pablo Delano is the son of two of the most important visual artists in the history of uh, Puerto Rico, uh, of Puerto Rican photography, film, and printmaking. He indeed has been shaped by what we could call the family business, better yet, by his family's mission and devotion. Born and raised in Puerto Rico, Pablo Delano has spent most of his adult life in the mainland United States, in Philadelphia, New Haven, New York City, and Hartford. He has devoted his career to portraying events, places, and people with dignity, beauty, and discernment. His work has taken him to Cambodia, Germany, Honduras, Trinidad, and elsewhere. And I find that many of his photographs depict complex human dramas survival of people, culture, identity, 
despite systemic violence, racism, genocide, civil wars, uh, global migration, With great care, he captures the social and cultural realities of transnational enclaves, resilience, human connection, beauty, and joy, despite abandonment by the states and the elites. Pablo's commitment and passion is evident in several of his New York City photographs from the 1980s and early 90s, especially his work in the Lower East Side, Washington Heights, and the South Bronx. There are several images that still haunt me. I will give you an example. In Loisaida, two young girls and a boy wearing roller skates sit on a, a street curb and smile at the camera. Graffiti decorates the storefronts in the background. One reads, Puto Riga. One aspect that is interesting in this photograph and others like this one is how important and poignant Pablo Delano's images are even in the midst of ruins. He documents life in the neighborhood, including play, the life of children, joy, and friendship, without becoming fascinated with ruins and dispossession. They are images of survival and resilience, indeed, but also of a dignified and complex celebration of life. This complexity is also seen in Pablo Delano's work in Hartford where he captures the knotted, intertwined history of ethnic replacement, global migrations, religious coexistence, and racial cohabitation in the midst of state and corporate neglect and exploitation. He tells the story of the city by photographing buildings, homes, businesses, church, uh, churches, and streets, mostly devoid of people. Viewers have to people the social landscape using their imagination. In this case, the images appeal to ethno-racial fantasies, stereotypes, and myths of what the Connecticut state capital is. Thus, these Hartford photographs make the viewers question their own preconceived notions of the city, if they wish to do so. If people are willing to look closely at the images, they can see in the minute details like the Puto Rigan of the Loisaida photograph I mentioned before, one little detail that lets them rethink their generalized notions. There are images of synagogues that have turned into Seventh-day Adventist churches, or of storefront churches whose signs read, Pare de Sufrir. Like many of his photographs, there is a hint of irony, a pun, or a detail that makes viewers questions, question their understanding of the image, their first uh, reading of the story behind the photograph. Puerto Rico urban art holds a complex value and is important in many ways. Most explicitly and obviously, it captures one of the most powerful events in the history of Puerto Rican visual arts, often erroneously ascribed solely to Santurce Esme. This movement, uh, this moment, is a massive, multi-site, multi-city, grassroots movement of artists who decided to create art in public spaces, especially neighborhoods that had been systemically ostracized by the state, social elites, and corporate interests. Santurce's Ley started in 2010, and Joy was there in the Calle Serra, Barrio Gandul of Santurce, explicitly aimed at revitalizing a neighborhood by creating an artistic district. It has evolved into a very large multi-arts festival of international reputation and has made this Santurce neighborhood an attractive spot for social elites, tourists, and now Airbnb investors. Some have called it an agent of artistic gentrification. Although promoting arts-related commerce was part of the initial intent, gentrification was not. The movement developed and spread out into other artistic events, especially in the downtown and marginal neighborhoods of other cities and towns like Ulebra, Arecibo, Ponce, and Yauco. Uh, the founder, Alexis Busquets, 
establish a model that was reproducible. Busquets learned how to access funds, contact politicians, artists, develop publicity, handle uh, social media, and extract profit for event producers, local businesses, and artists. In some cases, these events helped establish the career of artists who later became icons of Puerto Rican muralism. Some notable ones are David Sayas, Damaris Cruz, Viquismo, Esurbain, Omar Obdulio Peñaforti. This movement also launched collective endeavors like Colectivo Basta and the famed Colectivo Moribibi, where Joy is one of the founders. Most of us are drawn to the monumental and lavish murals performed with exquisite technique and artistry. We have seen them in our friends' and family's Facebook and Instagram feeds, and they are indeed majestic. My own fascination with them started through social media, but the actual visit to the Calle Serra and neighboring streets is much more complex, interesting, and majestic. I am particularly impressed by the scale and artistry of the murals, the way of using and negotiating the urban landscape, its abandoned lots, its half-demolished buildings. I am captivated by the way in which some murals are placed next to others, and by the manner in which the aesthetics of a whole street and downtown can shift with murals and public art. In some cases, murals celebrate political figures. In others, they are used to embellish the storefront of a business. Yet in others, they can be whimsical, provocative, abstract. Although the Serra Street locates the epicenter of the movement, there is a circuit of murals that can be followed. And in some cases, maps and finding aids are handed out or published in social media. However, it is, so, it is also of great interest to pursue other routes, to try to find murals and public art that are off the beaten path, uh, the paths. This requires patience and perseverance, but what emerges, uh, emerges in content, political intention, and artistry may be in stark contrast with Santurce's lay and its circuit. This is particularly interesting in alleyways, dead-end streets, abandoned buildings and parking lots, especially in non-commercial streets in Santurce and Rio Piedras. In some cases, artistic brigades have devoted a week to clear up and paint an overgrown urban lot or abandoned building. The combination of artistic genres, the lack of concern with the commercial value of the product, and the social and political and artistic commitments of the brigade volunteers creates a joyful and complex juxtaposition of images, a distinct landscape, a specific beauty uh, some would call it, which will not enjoy the same function or collective importance of the Santurce Esley landscape. Pablo Delano captures these more alternative artscapes in his exhibition. These particular photographs should be understood as standing in tension with the more, let's say, mainstream murals. In Puerto Rico urban art, the images also invite viewers to stop and look at the political content of the murals. Sometimes the political value is explicit. Other times it has to be delicately teased out. This is particularly important, important in the manner in which one mural is placed, is placed next to others, whose content may be completely unrelated or apparently in disagreement. Although there are many, or uh, I'm sorry, although there may not be one answer or any answer to an implied question, this contradiction should elicit some consideration or reflection related to how several images ended up <laughs> next to each other as if it were an incoherent sentence. Many contradictions uh, are inscribed in Puerto Rico urban art, and with this I'm finishing 
we should note that this is not an exhibition of murals, but of urban and street art. It is about how street art, graffiti, stencil art, tags, and other visual materials share the chaotic and random social landscape of the street. Uh, in the photographs, framing creative works, there are puddles of water, overgrown grass, rubble, trash, graffiti, lettering, tags, street signs, storefronts, fences, bars, and other elements, which point out that this is not an open air museum, but an actual urban landscape, a neighborhood of working people who walk the streets, who work, attend school, and who live where others paint or photograph murals or celebrate Santurce, Culebra, Ponce, Arecibo Estate. And with that, I finish. Thank you. Well, thank you okay, where do I start? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's like a very important thing to, to take into consideration the fact that like the space um, like originally isn't for like um, that type of dialogue to occur and how despite that um, it's been occurring and how like when this movement started as you mentioned with Alexis Busquet and his uh, the team that he has of people that were just very very um, committed to 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 making these these things happen um, it is it is naturally diasporic as like a person from Puerto Rico and going out to the states to study and you're like in contact with um, this like augmented uh, identity and reality of like what it means to be like from absolutely anywhere else but specifically Puerto Rican and specifically like in um, New York where he studied and how that puts you in contact with people from all over the world and and that like innate like innate a response of, of having to connect. It's not like even wanting to, it's like it's something that is predisposed and that has to happen, like just wanting to share your space, your experience as a Puerto Rican with other people um, and just like enriching that because um, as, as you mentioned, like there is a trope and um, it's not the same thing to like live through it than to read about it or see it from afar. And I think that's something that I, like come like I have come to terms with in in this uh, exhibition how um, being in these kinds of spaces has been like part of my life and and how how now it shifts um, because like a, an actual place that I identify myself with and and grew up in is being exhibited here and and just just being able to see. Um, almost like not even as a picture but as a window um i think that's like very 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 special and very intimate and how there's like no right or wrong place to start like there's like you can literally just enter wherever and and stop in whichever picture and and it's not like you were in the beginning or the or, or in the end of anything like there's no like predetermined way of touring into like a space like like a, a photo exhibition and for me it's like to, to have to like grasp that has been um, like a realization um, and, and, and other like as, as a viewer of like something somewhat something that has been partaken in and I feel like that's that's very special like I just see this and I just wish everybody could just be there like where all these things are and be part of that conversation and know in such a more holistic manner. And I think also like the movement has been very um, student led, like students are very, very, very involved in what happens in the communities um, because I feel like college and education isn't like something transitory. Like a lot of, I feel the experience that I've had here, um, you come from a college from X or Y place and it's like, a, like a finish line and then you go and do something else but like in Puerto Rico like everybody's from there that studies like there's a lot of things that had already been said and done so everybody's kind of on the same page and it can like go to the next level of of not feeling like a certain type of shyness 
or exclusion of being like in your own place in your own home and 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 how how like also the dimension of the space like everything like catches on like wildfire there's like new news every day and everybody knows about it and everybody has you know the the right to 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 take part in it and i feel like that's that's definitely very important how organically things um surge and uh, um yeah yeah i think like one of the most important things is how how it's very like um, the youth is very interested in being part of, of these movements and a lot of the ideas um, are shared that way. Um, and, and yeah, and how like language also plays into it. Um, um, like type, type like it's not the same thing like being able to say and express and view these things in Spanish, I feel like as opposed to like in English, I feel like that also is a super huge nature and also how everything is like in some way like historically or culturally linked into the space that 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 the pieces are in i feel like it's also like super important how it's like also being not only do students implement themselves into these spaces but how like how this is being picked up and used to also educate like like further um further generations of of, of new people that want to include themselves in these movements. Um, I think that's also super interesting. Like I would have never thought that like like scholars and <laughs> and, and and people that have like super high degrees would like tan siquiera like know my name or like know Colectivo Morivi or like teach people about it or use it as a reference point like to 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 explain a whole movement that sometimes I don't even know like where it where it where it stems from or where it's going, but that there's a lot of passion involved and, and a lot of um, like letting, letting yourself explore into these spaces and being able to connect on another level, how, how, you, how you, when you make a piece, um, you're also like obligated to spend time there and like um, sharing, sharing like with, with people that commute all the time and being able to hear what they have to see about, say about this piece or what they have to bring to the table, like what that reminds them of, or some sort of um, opinion or an anecdote. And I think that's, for me, that's like one of the most special parts of painting, not like not just painting, but actually interacting with the people there so they can also have ownership of that process, not, not just like it appeared overnight. And that's, that's perfectly fine for some people and how they make um, artwork. I feel like in art, there's enough space for, for all sorts of um, ways to to, to make art and how that um, is part of the dialogue. Um, but at least we, we clearly don't don't tag, like you can't do like one of our <laughs> works over overnight. And, and, and it's a lot also about like organizing and consent and, and, and an open dialogue. And yeah, I feel like, I guess that might be one of the things that that, that impacts so much about the movement and how like it was all we also like started as high school students and we are still students like in the process so so that is also like a very humbling standpoint to like introduce yourself into the world of art because um, it's still a process of learning and how like no none of the artwork would ever be like remote or static nor time or in space like there's always like added history onto uh, a piece that that changes its its context, and not only in mural work, like in other in other um, aspects of art. Um, like the T-shirt that I'm wearing is like of a colleague that I made, and it was made because of the debt crisis, and how we were just drowning in debt, and how like that would definitely like um, uh, like eliminate like um, eliminate our future because of having to worry to be like shackled to to like the price that we have to pay for something that the majority doesn't um, completely understand or see how like that, um, like the direct link towards it. And now like after the Harvard study of the, the, the actual like proximity of the death toll, like it adds so much more to, to the proposal of, of, of this artist that is a student and how much potential that has um, in, in the context where it's at. And, I feel like that that's definitely like a lot of artists I that that people are like are renowned are usually like in their 40s, 50s, 60s but um seeing like the visibility of of younger generations for me is 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 definitely like super empowering because there's 
there's there's definitely I feel like an ageism type approach to like oh you're too young oh yeah that's a phase oh but like when you're when you're older you'll understand but like I feel most of the movements that have actually changed like the way things are seen or done have been like because of that unsettling moment of starting to face reality as 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 as, as, as like a new uh, form of adulthood and and how 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 like people have the right to, to, to change that, to shift that, and it can also turn into a, a conversation, not into a, <laughs> into like dictatorship type, type way. So um, yeah, I feel like that's definitely the, the wave that um, muralism is bringing to Puerto Rico, um, like to not, not be afraid of a lot of things um, and to move you know that that silent majority <laughs> um because as, as something that like a very funny observation that i've seen is also how like n like i haven't seen any but like how you don't really see the the initiative like the initiative is always like of resistance of like wanting something better for ourselves and like being self-sufficient and 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 being like self-driven but i've never seen like a mural that like promotes like because they're very politically inclined I've never seen like a, a super badass mural about like pro statehood for example or something like that and I think how how that um like that fire that driven um like wanting to to own these spaces and that being like the the main um idea that's being pushed forward like um, shouldn't be dismissed because if it's like in a in a usual conversation with somebody else, a lot of people can like put themselves back towards like um, a lot of uncertainty. Like for example, of the future of Puerto Rico. But like when you see the artwork and and what surrounds like a lot of these environments, the message is otherwise. And and it's like in in that way, I feel um, there's there's that subconscious like work workflow of, of hope and. And, and wanting to deal with our own future as opposed to like a lot of uninformed opinions of of the situation. So yeah, yeah, I think like it's 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 just a start and, and, and how people can grasp the idea of, of of the negative connotations that it has, like like this um like gentrification wise, I think that's very important to also be part of the dialogue, not only just to like praise movements but to also pick up what what there's lack of earlier on on the on the on the movement as opposed to like letting it happen and just be conformed with and I told you so because it's been like that for forever you know um, and yeah so <laughs> that's one. so so us those of us who are 60 something can have heroes can have heroes who are 20 something too you know? uh, I, I, something you said reminded me of an article that I'm wondering if those some of you who are here may have seen <clears throat> that I think came out last week in uh, in New York magazine or maybe it was Vox online I can't remember it was an article promoting Puerto Rico as a tourist destination because of the arch and the headline I found really appalling and it was something about the something about how the island had um, something to offer for uh, to to all um, to uh, in, in every kind of art to offer from the high to the low, from high art to low art, right? as though there were a difference, right? So, as if it were like the museum of the old colony. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so one of the things that I I hope I. I try to do in my approach to the photographs is not judge, right? Just look at the look at the mural, look at look at it for what it is, and try to try to to understand it and photograph it, and photograph it in a way that that places it in a particular location, a particular space, so that the things that are around it inform the mural what it is. I'm wondering though, you, you told me a, a great story about um, the actual physical experience of painting the mural that that is down here. Uh, in the other room, that's, the photograph is down here in the other room. And what, what physically that required in terms of the space and the challenges 
of the actual production of the mural. Could you could you talk a little bit about that? I think they might like to hear that. Yeah, that was actually our very first mural. Like we were um, in like our senior year, um, um, about to graduate from La Escuela uh, La Central de Artes Visuales, which was where we met, <coughs> where we learned our technique, and and where we like grew together through through. Um, through like learning, um, like not like complementing, you know, um, learning uh, your basic like general courses that everybody learns, but with the focus of art, and I felt like that um, adds so much to like the caliber of of work, um, or the way just the like the expectations that one has of oneself and how you view um, <laughs> their surroundings and and the, and how like um, conversations are guided. So. Um, I just wish that was the norm, you know, um, for a lot of people because I feel it's it's very dismissive, like of art. It's just like just an option or just um, um, a side thing. But like being able to include it into a curriculum in, in a, such a like organic way, and how it's also, you know, um, it, like like a student has to make a lot of decisions for oneself instead of just like receiving information and 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 just like learning it out. I think that's that was a very important part of it. And so um, in that point of, of, of our high school experience, um, we met with Alexis Busquet um, through, a, through a, like some sort, some sort of panel about like people that graduated from public schools and are now making a living out of art because that's also very stigmatized um, how like the, the there's like at least in the island there's like this the the the, the starving artist like you'll never make make it um, with what you with like whatever talent you have because there's never a market for it or it's just too like self driven like here there's not like an art factory or, or an art office where you could just like clock in and out <laughs> and make a living out of it apparently um, and and a lot of other limitations that Puerto Ricans and other people that have like colonized ideals. Um, just like can't see through, like can get passed by that. So um, we reached out like as a way to represent the school, um, and it ended up being us eight women um, about to graduate high school, like who actually like got committed. It was supposed to be a super lot bigger a group. So when he offered the wall, he was like, everybody already had their own walls, um, like all the big artists, all the people in the lineup, and. And other people like add themselves into it. Um, um, people like from the community, or people that are also like studying that type of art, or people that end up volunteering and then do um, something of their own because it's a very um, unique experience. Um, so yeah, and it was like basically like in a in a lot that was like overgrown grass um, to like. Um, cars that were just like totaled there, like everybody would like throw their trash, like because there was like a ca like a ca like like a how do you say cafeteria? Like it's because it's not a coffee shop. Like coffee shop in English has a totally different connotation. It was less like a bakery type place, um, and like all the people just like put their trash like right in front of that space, so like like the dumpster could pick it up. Um, and he was like, so this is one of the options. And we're like, perfect, we'll take it. <laughs> and it was supposed to be like half of the wall, actually. And then we just like went into like also the other house. Um, and there was just like, you know, uh, used diapers, um, wood with nails driven into it. Like after a certain hour, the, the rats would come out <laughs> and like hang out with us. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Um, and we just thought it was like the perfect space to do a work of art. Like, why not? Um, um, it's so, still still yes, it's still there. It hasn't been. It's just like it's very unappealing to like have to go through all that trouble just to like go and draw something or put a sticker on it or a, a flyer. It was a very like unattractive space for like a lot of people, and we just saw so much potential in it. And. Um, yeah, we did what we did like as fast as we could, and just like pichandole like to the school. It was like a a Thursday, like a whole weekend, and we just like didn't even go to school like for two days. And the professors were all pissed, and we were just like 
getting insulation. <laughs> um, and but it was like a super fun experience um, and super rewarding and just like like being between friends like as a collective is a very different experience as opposed to being a solo artist going wherever and just like leaving your mark and being used to like okay this is my style and my style is what is going to predominate um or my theme is going to predominate and um so we just kind of like we also like since we weren't in the lineup we ourselves like had to like gather up what kind of pa paint we have in our own houses like who else might have more materials like that way of collecting things um and and yeah and like telling a friend like okay like we're like pose like this and we're gonna take a picture so we can do like that on the mural because it's very reference driven um so that's how we learned how to how to how to paint in 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 la central so so it was like a, like it's like we were so used to this kind of process like the only thing that changed was like that instead of doing it in a classroom or doing it in our home like we're doing it like basically in our backyard in our neighborhood because like this our school was like right around the block like five like a 10 minute walk um so it's 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 also part of the experience of being um in the school in the neighborhood um and it and and how we are also part of the community you know we're not we are not outsiders like that is where we are from and when and we have every right to be there and 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 occupy space and let ourselves be heard and let other people like hear um, and see like what we what we think and how that also like upgrades what they feel, think and feel about themselves because it's not like anybody like it's not just anybody coming and doing their thing it's like somebody from the space um, and that's also another connotation that has to be like somebody from outside has to come and do this and that it's like no like we ourselves can do it like it's a learning process and yeah, like at the beginning, they were like, ah, oh, sí, la, la pared de las nenas, sí, las nenas que están allá pintando, sí, lo que están haciendo las nenas, <laughs> like to represent the the the, the school or whatever, because um, Alexis graduated from from La Central, so like that's obviously like also another way of connecting like with with a community and like all all, all that has been said and done, like how how you identify in that sense, um, through public education, um, and. And yeah, and then when they saw like what we were at, like when we were um, advancing the, the 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 mural, um, they were like, oh no, like yeah, like she was like, y'all have to say a name, like get a name, like just whatever name for like when the press release comes and like people are like interviewing you and they take pictures because this is amazing, like you guys can't, like you guys have to keep doing this, and we were like, okay, so we were we were just like making almost, like we're always joking around, so <laughs> we would like throw out like really crappy names and whatever until like we landed on Moribibi because obviously since it was an abandoned lot of overgrown grass and weeds, um, that is what Moribibi is. It's like the, the touch me not plant, plant or the shy plant, la mimosa, um, pudica, and how that's also like part of a lot of people's childhood, like going outside and experiencing that response from nature. Um, uh, that in, in such a like um, like in such a colloquial way like it wasn't like it's not like a super um, um, venerated experience it's not like wow this happened and this is so important it's just like part like small parts of of of, of experiences like, I don't even know if like there are many baby plants elsewhere because like, I explain to people and they're like what <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So, yeah, kind of like the carnivorous plant, but it's not carnivorous. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. How like the 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 like sudden death of like leaving, but then like coming back a few seconds later, um, back to like, um, the the original um state um that impacted us and we obviously like at the moment it was just super reactionary like it was there um um but but we uh, eventually like ended up elaborating on on the the idea of like moribibi and how that's a thing that is very much like how in puerto rico it's called because in other places it might have like a different name and how there's also like a mythological aspect towards it um in the taino culture um and, and just bringing all those, all that information together and like, 
as as it was like since we started in that festival kind of context um a lot of other festivals obviously um wanted us to participate um obviously not 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 in a very rewarding sense like we're not international artists so we aren't are treated as such but i feel it's 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 it is very important to to put it out there like for an artist no matter what it costs. for artists who've painted murals in china it's <laughs> ironic for her to say she's not an international artist <laughs> You know, like that, that, that notion that you have, like, ah, oh, pasi, like, vecino, like, could you do me a favor? Like, a lot of times it feels like that. Like, hey, can you just pay me a mural? Because it's like, you know, you're like, you know, del patio. They have, they have, they have painted murals in China. Right? Yes. Say so yes, right? Yes. I didn't go to that trip, though. Um, that was Sharon and Raisa's experience. And, and, and it's also, I feel it's like it's, a very huge part of, of it is how each and every one of the Pearson people in the collective have their own way of experiencing. Okay, Ecuador. And uh, yeah, I did go to Ecuador. <laughs> just came, just came from Ecuador to pin a mural, and I'm going to Peru to pin another mural. But <laughs> um, so how do you see your work? Um, um, how how, have, how has it changed you? The, the fact that you're now in the Definitely not. Like I, I sometimes like just say it. Like because you made a big point about being grounded yeah. in, in community, and so now you're sort of global. You said, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been. Well, that's what I want to explore with We lose sense of that. I want to explore. There's, there's, there's also a, a history. to say global history of murals. Right. So, 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 right. That, which I wanted to address. Right, but I'm yes. asking her specifically about the response of the of the people in Puerto Rico in painting, like the artists and how they responded. And you, you made a big deal about talking about the locality and the specificity mm -hmm. of the neighborhood. So I wanted to see that, how you felt about that, painting that work way, and then suddenly having this broader so before what, what, before Joey answers, I just want to say that one of the murals that's more recent is very very. Uh, uh, I mean, I think you, you should. It's a mural that de de dealt with uh, uh, domestic abuse, the abuse of women, and that's a mural that had that took on a whole story of its own because. Yeah, it doesn't really feel that recent because a lot has passed, and and also like 2017 was sort of a void. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was definitely one of the, like, if not the most important, like one of the most important pieces that we made, um, that kind of like catapulted us towards like, um, making, making a mural here in the, in the U.S., um, um, in, um, 116th with second, um, which is now not there because, um, the, the just the nature of, I guess, what we do hits so close to home to certain people that they feel like they have the right and they have the need to intervene. Like a lot of people would think about defacing or like whatever, but we just think about as an intervention and and how um, certain certain content is, um, you know, is, it's the right of others to, to also um, say what they will um, when they have to and, and, and when the time is, you know, like perfect. So um, yeah, in, in 2016, um, we did a mural in Puerto Rico that um, was with the organization Paz para la Mujer, and they deal with um, survivors of uh, by, um, domestic abuse, um, and, and it's just like a super great initiative. And I think they used to, and I'm guessing they still do now because we haven't worked on it, I feel like we haven't worked on another mural, but they used to do, um, um, ¿cómo se llama lo, lo rotulo? The, the billboards um, so um, they've been considering like instead of like so, um, getting funds towards that just like getting funds towards making murals about the topic so um, and it's also goes back to like being connected through a community like La Central where like one of the daughters um, was a friend of ours and then like her mother works there and they contacted us um, so the mural that we made um, was um, uh, a female nude, uh, two of them, one of, of a bigger 
um, like super huge and a, another smaller one that you could see the whole body and we decided to depict like the Afro-Caribbean body especially and, and, and how it's um, usually associated with like other immigrants like like from the Dominican Republic and how like um, um, being in that immigration status also um, um, doesn't let you speak like on another level of like what um, that might feel like um, and how like statistically um, that that is reflected and we like really wanted to visualize that um, and also like a woman in nude because like, I think the biggest part of of like the biggest um, lecture of that slogan was like, if you can't respect a woman's body just as it is, like nude, like without anything, like you really can't respect it, like no, n no, no matter how. Um, so, um, and also the stance of it was um, in a way that would hide, like not necessarily hide identity, but like as soon as people like ad like look at a face, they just think about a person instead of a community. So, the the pose that um, was used um, reflected also like another. Uh, 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 photography um, that was also like the stance was used in like various uh, paintings um, and so one night uh, a person decided to paint a huge bra on it <laughs> because that's like funny or like um, was part of the conversation or was just like some sort of like obvious way of somebody to to react like they painted a huge ass bra like super amazingly like on a on a like 30 foot wall um mural and then on the on the smaller one they painted like the underwear cuz i guess that's as high as they could get um so and and like it was in like the 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 reactions were insane there was like people from like radio shows like calling us to like say of our opinion because that was like the hot news and like people from um um newspapers like trying to get our opinion and like people from like online um sites like trying to find out like how they can make a um um like their their own way of like showing this stuff and also like a lot of people online that put words in our mouth because it's like oh okay so this happened so then you um like i'm gonna say this because like this is what i think but it's if you think this other thing and, whatever, and and it was just like really hilarious and also like not only how um the general public um reacted but also like the art community reacted um and i thought that was like super interesting um yeah and i thought that was like the most important part it's like you know like if this happened like that obviously like reignites the conversation and and it's it's it lets everybody know that that this is still an issue that's worth fighting for because a lot of people think that everything has been said and done like history is already over like that's it um we're here now and it's like no it's like every day something and i almost feel like every day like more more even more history is made because so many things are happening at the same time um but like um and, like i just feel like it's a, it's just as important like oh my god they made so many memes <laughs> about about the situation i felt like that was really important how people can appropriate that and like turn it into this other like art and for art form and expression and because like digital art is yes yes it was like it was like right before Halloween so like there were like there were literally like dudes like that would just put on a bra and like surround themselves with, like fake monarch butterflies and just like like go like this and it was just like wow the 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 level of like you know like comfort and that sense of like being able to do that is impressive and but also like a lot of protests like a lot of women. A Halloween, Halloween costume. costume. Because it's, it's, the, the figure is doing this pose and is covered with butterflies. And so that was the costume. But I put the bra. Yeah. Uh, men, men wearing them. Yeah, yeah, men, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah. I was going to say that, you have, that this is a phenomenon that happened in Puerto, in Puerto Rico. And the people in Puerto Rico are very sophisticated because they have a history and they have a, a lot of the artists. And the education also that you receive through Central has a lot to do with the artists that existed during the 50s that lived in Mexico, that went to school in Mexico and studied uh, with the Mexican masters over there. And that they, Siqueiros got invited to go to Puerto Rico and do the mural of Prometeo in, in, in 
en la Universidad de Puerto Rico, and from the Mexican muralist, Siqueiro was the one that really brought in experimentation and, and, and a difference within all, all the other murals. And because of this and this education with these artists from the 50s and later on, mm -hmm. people in Puerto Rico, and also because of Divetco, because of the graphics and the posters and theater and the things that were going on in Puerto Rico during the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s, has made the, the people in Puerto Rico very sophisticated. That's why these murals are not being defaced or doing something upon them to, to discard them like it will happen in other communities. You understand? Because Puerto Rico has come up to the level that they have created. This is a phenomenon that has happened within the culture in Puerto Rico. If you notice, this happened in Chicago with Bill Walker, uh, Weber. They did a lot of murals too that had to do with the abandoned buildings and all of that, and also in Los Angeles. And many times uh, uh, during the 70s, Raquel Siqueiros and Luis Arenal, who were the, the, the last muralists, they went to Chicago for a couple of conference with a lot of artists that came from all over the United States. So actually, this also tells you that this is not an American thing. This is a Latino American thing. This is a Puerto Rican thing in terms of the global and the arts, okay? And also, social justice, like when Pinochet was in power, there was a uh, una brigada de muralistas that will go out at night and they will wash different walls and they will put their, their uh, social justice messages on the wall and many of them got killed. So there's been a history, okay, within our community and our global situation that artists get trained in different techniques and you learn all of that, but it's the message and it's about the wall, el muro. You understand? So what I wanted to say is that Puerto Rico and the Danish people are very, very sophisticated. Another example is, and really the only thing that I've seen that I think is comparable is Chicano Park in San Diego. Are you familiar with Chicano Park? Have you seen the murals yet? It's really just extraordinary and mind-blowing. When I visited Chicano Park, I didn't want to leave. I mean, just hours and hours, the, the quantity and the commitment of what you see there. I wanted to add something very, very, very briefly, which is I mean, we're hoping to, to have Guillermo talk a little bit more and also questions. But one thing that occurred to me in terms of uh, in terms of the work and the photographs and the project itself is that I'm sure that we're all in tune with what's happening on the island now. And every day we get something worse, right? Like we hear 4,000, 44, 5, 6, 4,000, right? Right? We get this number, right? And then we get, oh, it could be 8,000, right? And then we get, well, it could be 12,000, right? So that's one thing. And then, oh, with the debt and this and that and the other, and, and, and the head of, the, of PROMESA, the Junta, making ex exorbitant amounts of money, the closing of the schools, every day it's just something that's, that's um, really brings you to tears, right? It's like, it's like having, you're getting hit in the head with a sledgehammer every day when you, look at your news feed or whatever. And so, for me at least, this is a, a positive thing, it's, it's, which we need, right? Uh, the other thing that's happening is that the situation with agriculture, which is very encouraged, the idea that, that somehow we could work towards a self-sustainable food supply. Uh, and then this, and then this. And so I don't know exactly what that means, but I see it as, as something that, that's, hope, that, that's hopeful and powerful. So we open to the public uh, who wants to ask questions. Okay, uh, I, I, can, I, I can speak. Okay. No, no, use it. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll go on. Oh, you, you want me to forget it? Yeah. In terms of, uh, I would like to ask Joy a little bit more about uh, the mural movement, the actual mural movement. I know it started a few years ago, maybe five, six, eight years ago, as uh, Santurce is late, or is that a fact or not? First of all, uh, it, is that an organization that supports the muralists? Because a lot of these murals are made with uh, cherry pickers and big uh, equipment to get, you know, because they're large, two, three floors, 
you know, so it takes a lot of money to do these murals. Yeah. It's not just uh, grassroots, like I take a piece of paint and here you give me the brush or whatever. I mean, it's expensive, so how is that funded? Or is that yeah. um, I feel that there are different levels of intervention. Um, um, I'm not like fully like aware of all the details because um, I like for example I might not have been like there uh, the first um, edition because like that obviously starts um, um, with a very specific group of people like to that are actually committed towards it and then when others see the result like and, and uh, also like as a part of a community it's like yeah yeah so this and that will happen but like when you see the actual result like that's what really sparks. Um, um, a lot of interest so um, then like when I started um, getting involved like I was as a, I was there as a spectator like I didn't go full throttle as an artist then I got in myself involved as a volunteer and all this through like um, as, as a student and and then uh, the participation like was was also like um, an initiation like uh, on a process that had already occurred um, that I was not maybe um, like a central part of. So it's definitely a, a process. And I do admire the fact that um, like it starts a certain way, but it doesn't have to stay like in, in, in like such a low profile all the time. Like how, how, how that upgrade happens and also like the background of the people that started. Um, like Alexis, um, for example, like a very important thing of it is that he did come out to the states and saw how things were done here, and 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 did not just like say like ah no, eso no se puede hacer en Puerto Rico porque esto lo otro. Um, he didn't settle at that, and and just like being a resourceful person, a productive person, a communicative person, and, and finding the the ways of 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 connecting like what he wants to do with like other organizations that do have the money for this, because a lot of the things that are run here. Um, are like through grants and involving like like the city um, in a, in a political way and things like that and it shouldn't just stay in like this bar bipartisan way of like oh they're doing things wrong like I don't want to get involved um, seeing like how through these kinds of initiatives like 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 other things can be transformed not just like painting and 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 and, and, and like staying on a, on a one-sided conversation um, I feel like yeah that's well, a very that's important okay. part of it. Oh, yeah. I think this one is working as well, yes. One of the things that I, uh, I'm amazed is that there, there is the official landscape of Santurce Slay, and then there are people who, who are um, allowed to reproduce the model of Santurce Slay in other places, like, for example, Ponce Slay. But then the organizer generally goes to the mayor's office and requests for funding, mm -hmm. and that funding could be for uh, first permits for, for particular walls that are selected. Uh, painters are given the paint, some of the materials, uh, brushes perhaps included in some of the festivals, and there are people who are commissioned, and there are arrangements that are specific for certain artists. But other artists may be, for example, disinvited or invited late just to send a message that you're not going to be part of the core, or maybe last time you charged a little bit too much, you, you ran over budget, so now we're looking for, for new people. Um, and this is something that I know uh, from Ponce Slay, which was a fabulous festival. Mm -hmm. But there were We got people. invited late, that's why we didn't go. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, we're busy. <laughs> and, and there were artists that were in Santurce Slay number one, who were not invited to Ponce Slay, and they were living in Ponce, and they decided to take on a wall on their own expense, without uh, any budget. What is also interesting is to look at other places, not Arecibo uh, or Culebra that have other festivals, uh, but uh, Rio Piedras. Uh, Rio Piedras is amazing. And Rio Piedras really uh, has amazing girls, none of that support whatsoever. Yes. Yeah, that also was um, part of another festival that we were part of called Los Muros Hablan. Um, yeah, like it's just that since Santos is like like the most famous one or the most that makes noise, like it I guess opaques other other um, initiatives that might have even started before or around the same time, but um, without the you know like the like the oh you're related to this other like like no como like like almost like branding 
type type way it's like you started you might have started before on a smaller scale but that wasn't like what was hot at the time for example or you're doing it like with another group of people so it's like technically it isn't the same thing but but it's moved um, in, in the same way and with the with a very very similar initiative okay let me get Arcadio Quiñones he wants yeah. to say something <coughs> thank you very much uh, well I have where to begin I'll begin just by uh, saying thank you, gracias, uh, to the four of you for the exhibit, for curating the exhibit, Guillermo and Joy, bring your testimony. Uh, there's so many questions. Uh, uh, I Let me begin by asking uh, one very specific question, Joy. How about the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo and its role near to the Central High School? I, I'd like to hear a bit about that, too, because I... I, I don't know it uh, very well, but what I know about it, and uh, I was there a couple of years ago, and I, I've always admired uh, La Labra before what they did there in Santurce. So I'd like to hear about the institutions that are part of this network, you know, also. Uh, and, and then the question I really have is, I, I grew up in Rio Piedras. Uh, my whole family, Capetillo and Consejo, uh, Venezuela, and, and the, the center of town. Uh, I don't go anymore. Uh, it's been like 15 years I just don't go because it's so heartbreaking for me that Rio Piedras was destroyed long before the hurricanes. Yeah. And it was destroyed, uh, the places, because location here is so important, places in, for memory, you know? How to tell that story if the places themselves have disappeared, yeah. the houses, everything. You know? uh, so there have been previous catastrophes uh, before even the, 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 the debt was declared, no? uh, and Rioperas is one. And uh, it's interesting, and I think so sad, that, it's, uh, that the final blow was a symbol of modernization, El Tren Urbano, no? which really destroyed uh, so many buildings there in Rioperas. And uh, the university uh, actually has the merit of having created the uh, uh, a, a whole uh, community organized, uh, so I won't go into that, but Rio Piedras, uh, a catastrophe that happened a long time ago, uh, and the other one, very similar for Santurce, uh, some of my, my early protests, public protests, were because of La Valdoriotti and what happened with uh, also the creation of the, the area where the museum now is in Santurce, the destruction of that neighborhood. So, La Valdoriotti, my question is also modernization, not just the hurricanes and uh, the dead, but the clear symbols of modernization that have destroyed the fabric, access to the public beaches, no? In Isla Verde and Santurce, that came uh, with La Valdoriotti, of course, too. Uh, and Santurce was part of that, uh, you know. I remember going, taking the bus from Rio Piedras to San Juan, going through Santurce so many times. and It was such a lively community and so crowded and so thriving too in many, many ways. And that was really destroyed long before what's happening now. Uh, so, so my big question is, this is a story, and we have to thank uh, um, you for, for telling this story. But there's also a question, how does one tell a story? Because the mural is also, the murals are telling stories, most of them. Uh, so it's a story of places, specific places. Uh, the murals are, have chosen a story to tell. And I think that, that, uh, that, that, that Nitsa was right in remembering uh, the, the artists in the 50s who were also telling stories, uh, important stories, that were not really the official stories, um, that they were working for in Tibet and other places. No? So I have. I want to sort of to, to uh, perhaps talk about that context of destruction uh, in, a, in, a, in a very vulnerable, fragile island, no? uh, which uh, is not, let, let me call it man-made disasters, long before the new catastrophes that we are experiencing now and suffering from. And just to finish this, one of the authors that I really like, Albert Hirschman, wrote a book many, many years ago, and I felt today, you know, listening to you, this is what you're doing. 
and I have to thank you, a bias for hope. Not hope, but a bias. I mean, we, are, we have the bias that the world can change. And the artist can play a role, and that's so true, and it's so comforting. So I have that specific questions, and then this broad question. Thank you. So I feel like, um, yeah, one of the most beautiful places and like where a lot of um, um, just like super important initiatives um, are taking place, um, especially like in an art sense and in a social justice sense, is definitely Rio Piedras. Um, I find myself there like a lot super frequently because of the nature of the projects that are developed there, because the, of the consciousness of the abandonment of the space. Um, um, of like something that used to thrive before um, and how that's not part of my personal life, how that is only like a memory of other people that I can, that, and I can only appreciate it from that perspective, but um, how artists and students and younger people are like owning up to that. Um, and I feel like that's also part of, of, of a healing process, of a mourning process of like having to live through this every day and having to deal with, um, you know, with a personal sense of of maybe not being able to 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 change it like in like a direct action like economy wise, but like working around those spaces and involving um, personal work into it, I feel like that's a, mo a super beautiful way of, of of healing. But also like how how contradictory um, this whole effort towards modernization isn't really for us. It's like for others to come and like live somehow side to side and how that's like that that's always always the perception of like what should be invested on and what 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 that what it looks like to to invest in a place and how it, it evidently like ends up just being a, a contradiction like there's no um like reciprocity around it but yeah there's a lot of resentment around around that that type <laughs> of movement like for example how you mentioned um Ciudadela, how that area around um the the museums like between uh, Mapa Erra and Mac, how that was destroyed to build this and how like that um, is um, just something like kind of separate from, from the community. It's like entering a, a completely different space. Um, but how also like we should have the right of occupying it. Like it shouldn't be just like the, the prospective person shouldn't be like an outsider, it should be ourselves. But how, how there's that huge gap that a lot of people find super difficult on how to, how to, how to work to make a bridge um, between it because, um, yeah, like I can be like a person that is very used to precarity and, and working alongside that. Um, and I feel like a lot of the fright is to end up being like somebody that ends up like, like being seen as somebody like occupying the space um but like not in a not in an integrated way um yeah and i just feel like also there's a lot of things that you like i obviously don't have the personal experience of of what used to happen in puerto rico like before before i came but a lot of people you know spoke of of better things um but how like i feel a lot of it has been deteriorated just because of wanting to mimic more what happens in the United States and how that is not ever necessarily, like that does not go hand in hand of, of, uh, of it being better. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think uh, that conversation is still super open. So unlike you, I have returned to Rio Piedras, okay. although you, I found it too painful. It's, it looks it's it's extremely painful because, and I remember the, the, the Paradise Theater and the New Victoria Theater and Los Chinitos and the, the ice cream, you know, and all of this. And, and uh, but, but I wanted to address just briefly um, uh, the, what you opened with, which was uh, a question about the MAC, the Museum of Contemporary Art. And I think Guillermo probably has a lot to add. But um, I would like to just support, say my, uh, express my, my, my uh, very strong support for the Museum of Contemporary Art, the MAC. It is an activist museum and it is the home of artists now, the only museum like this. The director is extraordinary. There's a, the, the museum opened within weeks after the hurricanes, within weeks after, after uh, Maria. That museum was open to the public with a new exhibition called Entre Dichos which was an exhibition composed solely of newly acquired works. How much do you think they spent to, to acquire works by some of the leading artists in, in the island? Nothing, because the artists gave the work. The artists all gave the work. I'm really 
enormously honored, and this is going to sound, maybe sound wrong, but I don't care. Uh, but I'm enormously honored to be included in that exhibition. Not this project, but a project that I would urge you all to investigate. I would love for you all to just have a quick look on. It's a completely different project, and it's called the Museum of the Old Colony. Yeah. So if any of you have read, have drunk the, the Uvita, right? It's, um, yeah. But you've also heard of uh, this, this place that we refer to as the Old Colony. Anyway, that's in integrated into this exhibition. It has its own, its own room, its own uh, whole sala there and it's kind of a museum within a museum, but the relationship between the community of artists and that museum is extraordinary, and they're doing work that no other museum is doing. I think Joy can, can, can back me up on this. They also do tours of, of some of the murals. No? Yeah, like, I so feel give like... give to the museum, donate, yeah. you know, it's an amazing... Yeah, it's definitely like a super, super, duper badass museum. <laughs> and it's like, like just the head of it is obviously run by women. <laughs> um, and how, like, not, they're, not only are they, like, compromised with, you know, um, um, how, how, how people, like, usually view art, although that might be, like, the best, like, to the Mapa R or whatever, but, like, how the museum is very... Um, always creating like new things, um, like not like as a spectator, like the events that they have are amazing and, and the artists that they back up in Puerto Rico are like also amazing and how they also are, are committed with the communities that they are like neighbors with. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the work has gone towards like Alto del Cabro and like Tras Talleres y Gandul, like they're, they're, they're active in that sense. Um, and I think like that's that's one of the most powerful things that that the museum has to offer. Like it doesn't um, just uh, let itself like create its own closed space of people to work with. Like just like the same people, as like, the same artists, like working. And and how there's also like different levels towards it. It's not the same thing all the time. Like there's um, like like people that do land art that expose there. Other people that do like muralism that expose that uh, that have worked. Um, with them, um, and and yeah, and definitely the, the alliance um, with La Central is like just like super important towards it, and and, a, and an amazingly like humbling experience because it's just like something that is almost like meant to be, um, like because of the closeness, and and it, and that is definitely super enriching both for the museum and for the students, <coughs> um, and and it's like a powerhouse. It's and I'm just like super proud of being able to like know Marianne and work with her and see like what what she and and, and Evita are doing in 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 those spaces and yeah I, I almost always wish that I would be involved even more <laughs> um, and that also also other people like don't think of of, of a of a museum as like a, a static place of like a silent place of place where you like behave a certain way and like almost like is like almost like a plan Z, like the last option to be like, oh, well, we could like do museums or, or whatever, because it's definitely a, like a lot of interesting conversations come to play and, and how like it's, it's just embedded into, into the community, yeah. I think. I, I, I'm also thinking of the issue of uh, modernization as a factor uh, that is perhaps central to the catastrophe that has being created. And it's a catastrophe, of course, that has to do with, uh, with finances, with the economic situation of the island, of the infrastructure, but it's also a catastrophe of uh, intersubjectivity, of, of how people engage with each other, feel with each other, uh, travel with each other. Um, and I think some of the responses, uh, and this is something that really drew me to Los Murales and to urban art in Puerto Rico in particular, some of the responses to that catastrophe uh, have been uh, of a different sort, if you will. Uh, they have been done in, in ways that uh, perhaps have not been seen in Puerto Rico. Uh, they, they were more anarchist in, in structure, uh, more anarchist in form, uh, there's not a desire to be completely integrated to the fabric of a, of a political project, but that they're random and chaotic and appear in different places, and sometimes they do not respond directly to the crisis. Uh, but they are a response to the crisis, but they don't respond in their subject matter perhaps directly to the crisis. 
Nelson Rivera wrote a very interesting article recently, uh, not the one that came out in 80 Grados, which is also very interesting about the legacy of Luis Ferre, uh, but uh, about how um, breaking the law is important for art. And in the case of Puerto Rico, Santurce Slay saw a, a, a shift from the people who were painting the walls illegally and were being sought, uh, pursued, or persecuted by Santini and fined. Yeah. So we had uh, policeman hours, policewoman hours I imagine as well, pursuing kids who were painting on the walls and they were being fined heftily. Uh, so money was being spent in these lawbreakers when Santini left and the new administration came in San Juan, it was a, a, of a different sort. But the fact of, of breaking the law was important. Uh, Santurce's lay it isn't breaking the law, but you have uh, law breaking taking place in Rio Piedras and in other places. People who are insurgent in their practices. There's a, there's a lot of, you were talking about tagging, and uh, I, have, I have to ask you to come clean, I know you tag as well, in addition to painting I, I murals. Wish. <laughs> you don't, really, okay. Um, so so th there, is, uh, there is lawlessness in Rio Piedras, in content, in practice, in aesthetics as well. Yes. Tienen fotos del que hicieron el lavar Dorioti, like the really long one, because I love they always like all the time they're changing the message yeah. on that one. So it's like a really really active piece, and it's like definitely for me like the subconscious. But that's not the artist is not identified. It's just a group called La Puerta. So and, and then you have you have a different practice. Uh, I, I would suggest a different practice uh, and uh, other sorts of art. And I learned a lot by traveling with Pablo. A, a stencil art or tags. There's an artist called Fisu. Originally, he was a little bit more uh, uh, political, but he, he has tagged all over the island. What is the other one of the bear uh, and the robot? Uh, city robot? Shitty robot. Shitty robot. Uh, and, and you travel the island and you see there are tags all over the island. They're pretty sophisticated, but th it is the fact of breaking the law. Another thing that I would suggest is that modernization um, is indeed uh, the, the seed of the crisis, of the catastrophe, but uh, uh, I mean, without quoting Naomi Klein too much, uh, this blockchain mentality, this desire to invest in catastrophe, mm -hmm. to create the catastrophe, to create a system of global capitalism that is nefarious, that is like a vulture, and has that mentality, and set things up for a catastrophe to happen. How do you plan and respond to that? Uh, I, I think Puerto Rico has become a laboratory in terms of artistic practice to respond to that. Uh, and the, 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 the networks of artists, you're talking about exchanging the t-shirt of my friend for other things. And this, tip, uh, this type of collaboration that is taking place, there's a certain aesthetic or artistic practice in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. that has mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it's a very random community, a multitude, if you will. It's a different grammar, uh, I would say. Um, that, is, uh, that is perhaps the way to respond to this sort of capitalism. Yeah, I think what you're raising, what you raised in Naomi Klein's name, also within the context of disaster capitalism and the shock doctrine. Exciting is there's a little book that she put out recently oh, called The Battle for Paradise. Yes, yes. All the proceeds of that book, it's a very tiny book, all the proceeds go directly to support an umbrella organization in Puerto Rico called Punte Gente. So, this is an umbrella organization that's supporting a lot of the grassroots movements, the agriculture, like really developing the agriculture and feeding the Puerto Rican population. And then there are also uh, the sustainable energy sources, the wind and solar, and there's Casa Puebla that's always existed. Yeah. And it's yeah. been really, when the blackout happened, the whole disaster happened, they, they were it. helping people. People were coming in and plugging in their yeah. respirators, their dialysis, whatever they needed, their phones, because, because they had electricity for 
you out. And there are a lot of groups like that throughout the island. So right. uh, I think that's whether Puerto Rico is an, uh, an experiment or laboratory for this, uh, addressing the crisis. I mean, not the immediate crisis, but the overall crisis of disaster capitalism. Um, all of these efforts are really exciting. And I think it's, uh, I think one of the things that came about from a, a, a talk that was given at Cooper Union a week or two ago was the support of the diaspora and moving forward and, and really supporting the, the causes of the island and really pushing. There's other groups here like pushing, how do you talk Please. and lobby to your, the leadership here? How do you go to your congressman, your councilman and say, hey, you know, you gotta focus on Puerto Rico. You're a constituency here and uh, we really need more effective aid to that island to support it, to develop, not for the Puerto Rican population, not for outsiders who are really going to exploit the island for their own benefit. And also, so, Puerto Rico needs SSI for Puerto Rico, which they don't have. Do they have SSI. Yeah. There's yeah. people so in Puerto things. Rico, I mean, this is, you're an American citizen, and you don't get SSI in Puerto Rico, that's <laughs> ridiculous. And so there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez just put something in Congress to see if they pass it. So we have to lobby with our congressmen. Uh, everybody should go all over the United States and ask you <coughs> Congress to support this bill. This is gonna help the people that are sick in Puerto Rico, thank you. I don't know if you saw, but she also wished Trump a very happy birthday. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to just ask uh, their questions. I just want to say quickly, guys, I wanted to pick up something that Guillermo said at the beginning of his remarks, which I wanted to offer a little bit alternative, uh, alternative view on. You said that this is not an exhibition of, of, of murals. This is an exhibition of, what did you say, of urban art. Right? So I would say, no, those are both wrong. It's neither. It's an it's exhibition of photographs. <laughs> of, ur of urban art, and I, and it's not just a, I, I say I don't mean to be funny. I'm saying it because it's an illusion. Everything you see here <laughs> is an illusion. This is what you're seeing is ink on paper. Okay, it's not the murals. Um, so as a visual artist, that gives me certain pleasures and certain joys. Like anybody, a lot of visual artists here, you know what we like. We like shift. We like shape. We like color. We like geometry. That's our business, right? It's our business. It's what brings us joy and pleasure to find balance and harmony and formal, all of this stuff, uh, right? But, but beyond that, it also, it also does something that uh, no one mural could do, right? If we could have an exhibition of murals or of urban art, it would be enormous. It, what it does is that it makes it possible for to have all you here in the room today talking these things that we're, that we're saying. Right? Okay. Any more, any more questions? Yes, I, I just have a comment. I, uh, I just wanted to uh, draw attention to the importance of uh, saving our legacy, our artistic legacy. And I just wanted to mention, if you didn't know about uh, our artist, uh, uh, Torres Martino, a uh, uh, mural at the, at the Julia de Burgos School that has been erased and that the government is neglecting you know, any help to see if this can be restored, how important it is to see how we can save what the government is not saving. And, and just one brief comment too, along with that too, uh, uh, relevant I think for the whole, for your photographs, because they document too. And they have the documentary value, uh, which is so important uh, for all of us about public art, mm -hmm. no? It does. In 80 Grados, there's, uh, I mean, among many others, but the excellent articles by Erika Fontanes about the public and the private and how the government of Puerto Rico is doing something which is illegal. The government is also breaking the law all the time. No? And this, uh, her article focuses on the fact uh, that uh, the government is selling, offering public property which even the Constitution of the Estado Libre Asociado uh, does not allow, I mean, forbids to sell public property like schools, <coughs> giving them away for nothing or whatever. It's illegal. And she has this excellent article. 
and her example, her main example, not only the schools but the beaches, no? And that's public space, and there is a legal battle also uh, ahead that is, I mean, it's taking place right now, but it's very uphill, no? And there it brings again the notion of the public, uh, the public space owned by the people of Puerto Rico, as it is stated in the Constitution, it's being sold and given away for nothing, for peanuts. The school, that school, that school, that school was sold for a dollar, yeah. and, and, and the so owners now have to pay. And they won't sell it to us, they're selling it. to experience this. But also I wanted to say that we need to really support Puerto Rican arts on the island. We support them here, but we need to support them on the island. And one of the things that I do is I get a membership for Matt. You know, get memberships. Even if you're not there and you don't go all the time, but you got to keep it alive, you got to keep it vibrant. So we need to do that. I also wanted to say that one of the things that I really appreciate about MAC is it's not only the exhibitions and the installations and all of that, but also their support of the uh, art literature uh, by Puerto, Rico, Puerto Ricanos and other Latinos. And um, there is a wonderful book that I picked up last year. I think it was by Ferrer. And it was outdoor art, or uh, I think it's outdoor art. But you see, <laughs> and you see all the murals and everything. And I was, it just educated me on so many levels, you know, because I was born in Puerto Rico, but raised here. So I go back and forth, you know. But um, I don't know a lot, and it really opened up my mind and made me want to support murals wherever they are. So anyway, thank you so much for today. Anybody else? Okay, so thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you.